<laughs> nice. So that's what you're gonna wear for dinner with Jen Anderson? Yeah, she's from Star Trek Enterprise. We're gonna make all the food Star Trek themed too? You're not gonna need this cookbook. Yeah, sure, I'll make uh, Klingon Gach and blood wine. That sounds good. Wait, no, what? Inspired by our love of science fiction, we're cooking up sci-fi food that looks authentic and tastes delicious. This is Sci-Fi Night. Welcome to our wonderful kitchen. I could almost totally see you cooking right there. <laughs> We've got some Klingon blood wine. Yes. Would you like some out. Uh, sangria? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not actual real Klingon blood wine? We didn't get any targs, we didn't slit their throats. Being that I'm predominantly vegetarian, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, but so we're using red wine, it looks like, so it looks... You know, red it looks wine like that. with as many of the red fruits as we can get. We need, we I need was gonna say more. we need a lot more than that. She is more. making me make you gawk. <laughs> wow, you're making gawk. Now that's serpent worms, usually eaten live, so that you feel them the Very... death throes in your stomach. And you're actually supposed to bite them as they go down. It's important to actually bite the worm. Oh. The way down. Otherwise, it can actually infest somebody's intestine, oh, no. and it becomes a parasite inside of you. So, okay. Ironically, today's gawk is actually going to be vegetarian. Actually, is it almost vegan? No, because you're using eggs. Eggs, and I'm going to plate it on goat cheese, so it won't be okay. entirely vegan. But it will be vegetarian, and it will Perfect. be very, very fresh. Kapla. Kapla. I like my blood wine very young and very sweet. What the hell did Worf mean by that line? It was very weird. I remember watching it because even when he said it at the time, you're kind of like, it's, yeah, it's like, that's a little creepy. That was a little weird. <laughs> so to make the dock very fresh, I can't make it alive, but I do want to make it as fresh as possible. So I'm going to make my own pasta. Hence the pile of flour. Yes. You were part of the bridge crew for yes, Star Trek Enterprise. I was. That is so insanely exciting. Yes, yes. And walking onto the set of Star Trek that very first day was probably one of the most exciting days of my life. So, because I grew up as a huge Star Trek fan. I mean, I think when I was a little girl, I wanted to grow up to be like one of the Orion slave girls. I didn't really know what that meant. I mean, I didn't really know what that entailed, like as a lifestyle did you, choice. Did you go up to buy your mommy, daddy? I would be, a, yeah, pretty much. I'm gonna be a slave girl. I'm gonna be a slave girl. But they were beautiful and they were green and they were exotic, and somehow that was just amazing. And yeah. um, so I've been a hardcore Star Trek fan my whole life. So getting to actually be a part of the show and a part of the crew was. I, I can't even imagine. I would have. That would have been. A dream come true for me. Yeah. Have you ever made your own pasta before? Yes, I have. Very cool. So, um, so you can judge him all you want. Do you, have you? I'm gonna <laughs> just sit here and judge. <laughs> yeah. How long were you on Enterprise? I was not in the first season. You were not. I was not in the first season of Enterprise. I came in the second season, so I was second season through the end of the show, and I should know how long that was. But any time the main crew, you know, to Paul and Captain Archer, and they all, and any time they went on an away mission, I got to sit on the bridge and take over engineering. So nice. So, yeah. did you get to drive at any point? Twice. Uh, Twice. Nice. There were two directors that came on that didn't know that I was just supposed to be in engineering, and they put me to pilot the craft. And of course, nobody says anything when that happens because we all want to fly the ship, so we're all hoping <laughs> it happens. Like an to us. So <laughs> nobody calls it out. Nobody goes, "She's not supposed to fly the ship." Twice. I could imagine somebody would like end up murdered if that happened. But of course, fans will write in and say. She's only supposed to be in engineering. She's not supposed to fly a ship. So they'll get letters and emails, actually, about this stuff. It's like a volcano that's collapsing in on itself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And eventually, a door would just kind of magically form. It looks very sci-fi. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're making something otherworldly. Did you have a name like that they, they knew you by? They used our real names. Ensign the, Anderson? Yes. <laughs> so my patch actually said Ensign Anderson, so you couldn't get any more real than that. It was awesome. That is fantastic. Oh, yes. I feel really useless over here. Should we be helping you in some way? There's not really anything to drink. Okay. Oh, oh help me. You, you have your own cooking show. I have several. The first one was uh, Jen's Guiltless Gourmet, and it aired on ION for two years, and in Kuwait. Um, in Kuwait. In Kuwait. Yeah, it was picked up to air in Kuwait, but I've, really? never, I've never been to Kuwait, so I don't know if it actually happened. But I'm really <laughs> hoping funny. it did, because food is something that can bring people together. So a fun thing about my first show that I did, um, of course, I just came off working on Star Trek, and a number of the crew members had found out that I was doing a cooking show, and they all pitched in to help me out. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so Gary Tischel was my co-producer, and he was a first AC on, on Enterprise. And Marvin Rush, who had been the director of photography for years and years throughout many of the series, he was my DP. 
<laughs> Mike Demerit was my AD. I mean, I just literally had like this an awesome, awesome crew to do this like little cooking show. <laughs> So did you ever think that you might actually be eating gawk one of these days? No. <laughs> no, at least not in the total traditional form. Though I've done a lot of traveling where I have eaten very strange things and I've been to countries where they do serve you, you know, things like bats, you know, um, ant larvae. Wow, and you've, you've actually eaten a lot of those things. Yes. That's crazy. The <laughs> dough is done resting, and so we've got a lightly floured surface now mm -hmm. that we're going to roll the dough out on. I'm going to lightly flour my awesome rolling pin that I have right here. Nice black rolling pin. Very dark. A big black rolling pin. <laughs> Although, wait, I need, I need, I need, I need encouragement. <laughs> Kapla. Kapla. Mm. <laughs> it's like a new drinking game. Uh -huh. We're going yeah. to start watching The Kapla drinking right. game for next gen should be every time Riker, you know, sits over the, the chair back. <laughs> Oh, we could do a Star Trek shaped ravioli. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'll do that next time we have Jim over to visit. I'll figure out a way to do Star Trek insignia ravioli. There's actually some delicious food in Star Trek, too. I mean, there's Hass Brett, Romulan Ale. Uh, What's that weird tuber that Neelix always tried to pick and everybody oh, hated? Oh, yes, and everybody hated it. I gotta totally make ravioli out of that. You don't have to have a pastry cutter. I just happen to have one lying around. I'm going to use it. Uh, actually, Jody, uh, this is going to be fun. Let's let Jen uh, cut the pasta. I don't want you to eat flour all over your I, I promise if there's any problems with it, it's completely and <laughs> utterly my fault. I'm a pro at not spilling. Now that I've said that, You're gonna spill I'm going to have like the entire rest of the blood wine over my head to have some So you, I want you to cut it so that it's like this. I want it to be kind of a linguine size. I, I feel like they're serpent worms, so I try and make them as long as possible. Oh, OK. My introduction to Star Trek was with Next Generation. I had a giant crush on Will Wheaton, um, or rather Wesley, because I didn't know who his name was, what his real name was at the time, but I was in love with Wesley, and especially that episode when he pretty much saves the Enterprise, because they're all wearing these like glasses things, and everybody's like in this other world, and, and he goes through and basically saves the whole ship, and I was, um, I was like probably what, 12 year old in love, or? I remember that though, I think every girl was about that time. Yeah. So once you've got a few cut, let's do your dough back a little so you have a little space to work. Because what I'd like to do is okay. try and give a little bit of separation of room between each of your pasta. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making them into serpent worms by using a fork. So now I got to prove that I've actually cut these apart, and they're not just, <laughs> and they don't just look like they're separate. The, the thing is, if you if you, if you don't give yourself a little room, you're going to press them all together. But if you use the back of a fork and you press it into the back of your linguine oh, you're in give spaces them like this. It's gonna make it look kind of worm-like. Trying to separate my worms. All right, I'll let you separate your worms. I will. So glad I will, this is a vegetarian episode. <laughs> I will press it in the worms. So in the meantime, I'm gonna start sautéing up our vegetables that are gonna make our sauce. Oh, so oh I'm gonna place I, I this severed here. a worm. That's Sorry. fine. They grow back. Well, now you have two worms. They regenerate. Gets, yeah. <laughs> so right. we're gonna use a little bit of olive oil in the pan here. Shallots. Mm. The hot oil with. So sizzle just a touch. Oh, they're gonna smell so good. Yes, they are. It, it, we always complained about the smell of Klingons whenever they were on a Klingon vessel or whenever they came aboard. Like the Vulcans so, complain about the smell of humans. Exactly. Yes. So I feel like it's gotta like be dairy. a lot of garlic and pungent stuff in their diet that comes out of their awesome. pores as they <laughs> as they sweat. In their leather. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut the beets into kind of rectangular shapes like this, and that, that will go along with the dish fairly nice well. Nice bite-sized shapes. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a stir so we can saute it. Also residual after. juice in the bowl, so I'm gonna Ooh. go ahead and pour that in there. Nice. Beet juice. Beet juice. There we go. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna throw the pasta in, in this pot. Okay. Should, do we should need we to... just go ahead and do it? Yeah, let's just go ahead and do it. All right. Okay, this is gonna take like four or five minutes at most. One so, at a time? You can put them in a few at a time. Just try and make sure they kind of separate as you uh -oh. put them in. Because I'm picking them up. Okay. It's not the end of the world if they don't. And Woohoo! <laughs> We're making serpent worms. Yeah. Pot of worms. <laughs> <laughs> Pot of worms. Ooh. One of the things I should point out is a lot of the, the gawk in, in uh, Star Trek looks like soy sauce, kind of like they're, they're kind of brown. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, there were 51 varieties of gach. Uh, some <laughs> right. jumped, some writhed, and some were packed in tart blood. Uh, and in general, they were meant to be kind of bloodworms. So I always appreciated the idea that they were bloody, and so I was going for more of a blood, blood look thing. for my gach. 
and they were going to actually throw them out into space, and then That's they were right. told that they can't because it's an environmental hazard. When was the first time we saw a gawk? I believe the first time we saw Gok was actually in the Riker episode where there's an exchange program and he goes to, uh, he exchanges with a Klingon officer. He goes to the Klingon ship and, and is a Klingon uh, officer for a little while. And when we actually get to the Klingon ship, he has his first meal in the galley, they're serving Gok, but then that's when they tell him that it's served, best served very fresh and it's actually alive. And they expect him to, of course, balk at this and not want to yeah, do it. But too. doesn't he just butch up and eat it live? He does. And like, yeah. Because well, Riker, Riker sits on chairs with by stepping over them, so he's a badass. He eats cock. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this basil. This basil will only cook for just a second, and it will cook down and almost disappear. I'm also gonna add for flavor a little bit of lemon zest, mm. and then we'll let this cook down, and we will plate it on top of some goat cheese. I just, I just made this out of. Uh... Oh, dough. I made mine first. You're you're just saying that. I made mine first, and she, she copied she, me. I just she made mine. First. She made hers uh -huh. first. <laughs> Everyone can make one. Oh, and now we're all gonna flour. Oh yeah, look, we it will just, just leave the flour impression. Ooh, that's beautiful. <gasps> oh my gosh, nice. So the trick is to hide the goat cheese uh, so that it looks like gawk. Um, but when you eat it, make sure you kind of bring your fork all the way down and get a nice, good big bite of goat cheese. And get the goat cheese. Okay, so I can't wait for the Star Trek experience of eating. <laughs> Gah. Gah. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That is delicious. And I love the lemon zest with the goat cheese. Mmm. The lemon zest is important. It adds a lot of flavor, but it doesn't, you don't see it, so you don't detract from the fact that it looks like gah. Well, this has truly been delicious, um, and all good things must come to an end Aww. in my tummy. <laughs> Mm. Looks authentic, tastes delicious. Kapla. 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 So if you feel like having a party while you revisit any of your favorite Star Trek series or movies, go ahead and go to our website and you can learn how to make Klingon Gach from your very own fresh pasta and Klingon blood wine. Kapla. On high to get the whole oil up to heat. Did you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oil up to heat. Anytime you start to stutter, I'll just adjust my universal translator and uh, <laughs>